Hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this morning uh, on today's uh, Tuesday live stream. Uh, I am filling in for the lovely Suzanne today. Um, and today we're going to be talking about taking care of your citrus in the springtime. Um, this is when citrus is really starting to kind of come into its own. You get all kinds of really great flowers on it. Um, I'm really smelling a couple of these ones right next to me just standing here. Uh, the second I took my mask off, uh, that smell is just so fantastic. Um, it's really, really beautiful and kind of intoxicating, which is really great. Um, but for citrus, uh, we grow citrus super well here in Southern California. Um, it is becoming harder and harder to uh, get citrus here in California. Uh, we do have a citrus quarantine happening in most areas um, and it's caused by a psyllid that's uh, been newly discovered which causes citrus greening disease and thankfully we are not in the quarantine area here at Rogers Garden so we are still able to sell citrus. Um, if you go most places you'll see that they just don't have it at all. Um, that being said however what is happening is that it's becoming a little sparser on the market because um, a lot of companies that were growing it have learned that they need to kind of diversify it a little bit and grow other things uh, because a lot of people are unable to buy it and stock it and carry it like we are. So uh, if you really want to have citrus in your yard, if you see it, buy it because who knows what's going to happen in the future. So that is uh, the big key point that I've been telling everybody is just make sure you get it when you can get it. Uh, don't wait. Don't hold off. <laughs> get what you can get. So that way you have it. Um, what uh, is really important to do now in the springtime is now we're really starting our feeding schedule. So hopefully you've already given your citrus its first uh, feeding for the beginning of spring. Um, but then there is a second end of spring uh, feeding that we should be doing starting around May. May. So if you've missed your first feeding, go ahead and do it now. Citrus are really, really heavy feeders. They like a lot of nitrogen and they like a lot of iron. So you'll notice in front of me, I have this really beautiful lush green. Uh, this here is a Mexican lime. And then next to me, I've got this guy that's a little bit more on the yellow side. He is really lacking two things. He's lacking iron and nitrogen. So uh, feeding that will really improve this. So I'm going to make sure when we're done with this video, I give these guys a really good feed. But um, would you want to make sure you're using a citrus specific fertilizer on your citrus because of their needs. So an all purpose is not going to work necessarily for them unless you're adding all the extra iron and nitrogen um, in there. But I just suggest getting a good all purpose citrus specific fertilizer uh, to use on all of your citrus. Make sure you're really following the directions in the back. Um, I also find that when I talk to people, they don't realize how much they're supposed to use. When you're using organic fertilizers, and that's all we sell here at Rogers, you're using quite a lot. So I think a lot of people think, oh, a handful will do. But really, it's a, a whole cup per inch of trunk of the bottom of the citrus. So you're going to find the bottom of the citrus. You want to go about four inches from the ground. And how wide is it? If it's a whole inch wide, you're using a whole entire cup of fertilizer. Your hand is really about a fourth a cup. <laughs> so I just have a nice little pair of plastic ones that I've bought and I've made sure that I just keep it next to it, uh, measuring cups. So I'm using the right amount every single time you don't want to skimp on your citrus fertilizer. If you're feeding something in a pot, um, I would even go a little bit more than what it says on the box because once you're feeding something in a pot, when you're watering it, any stuff that gets flushed out the bottom of that pot is no longer available to the plant anymore. Uh, so I find that it flushes out a lot faster and I find my citrus in my containers uh, go a little bit more yellow. So I make sure that I add a little bit more to them. I, I do a little bit of feeding in between the three recommended times on the back of the box. I do three times in between that as well. I also use um, some iron. Um, you'll notice that with um, citrus, you'll find that there's two different kinds of yellowing you find on the leaves. They both look very similar. Um, but when you have very green veins and very yellow patches in between, that is a lack of iron. Uh, so I feed a little bit of the extra iron just to kind of boost that up. Once your leaves turn too yellow, sometimes there's no coming back from that. So you want to avoid getting too far before you can't dial that back. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. So don't wait on feeding. Um, the other things that I like to always have in stock, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm a huge, huge fan of the Malibu compost tea. So 
works great on citrus as well, especially your citrus in containers. Uh, you want to really make sure that you have good living soil. Uh, just like us humans, the more uh, nutrient filled we are and the better our gut bacteria is, the better we are. Same thing with plants. So you want your soil to be filled with all of that good bacteria, all the good funguses, um, all those good nematodes uh, is very, very important. The more alive your soil is, the more happy your plants are. Um, and then when it comes to treating them, um, one thing that we've been noticing, this really kind of started around the beginning of the 2000s, is uh, citrus leaf miner. Um, so I have a lot of people bring this into me. Um, if you have citrus, undoubtedly you've seen this on your citrus. Uh, the new leaves will kind of be curled in a little kind of contorted and a little bit funny. Um, so you want to make sure that you are ke uh, keeping watch on that. But typically by the time you see that curl on the leaves, um, the leaf miner has already hatched out of the leaf and is totally gone. Um, so a really good thing to use um, to help that problem is using the traps. So I like to use the citrus leaf miner traps and hang them in the different trees around my citrus. This lures the little moth into the trap. So it takes it away from your citrus and into the trap. This is not gonna totally solve the problem, however. You wanna do two different things. You wanna have the little leaf miner trap hanging and you're checking for uh, the moths. Once you start seeing moths, those moths have probably already hit up your trees and landed their eggs on that. And then what happens is the egg hatches into uh, the little larva and then it goes in between the leaf and it eats and it eats and it eats and it makes these funny little spirally trails and as that leaf grows it kind of contorts and gets sort of funny looking so the second you start seeing any activity in these you want to sp uh, spray your plant with spinosad so once you see the damage, probably a bit too late to spray. You can always take off some of the leaves. You don't want to take too much off, but it's really more of kind of an aesthetic thing in general. Um, but you want to spray with something that has spinosad in it. We carry two products that have spinosad in it. Um, this is the Monterey one. I really like this one because it also has a little bit of the insecticidal soap. So you're always looking at the active ingredients in the corner. Um, the insecticidal soap also works on things like... Um, aphids. It will help work on your white fly. Um, we also carry one from Captain Jack. It's just straight spinosad, so it will work specifically on that leaf miner. Um, with anything with spinosad, I always tell everybody it is an organic product, but you want to make sure you don't get it on bees or ladybugs. So I always suggest spraying it first thing in the morning um, or in the evening and kind of shaking up your plant to make sure that anything that's there has flown away. If you shake up a plant that has bees in it or ladybugs in it, first be careful because <laughs> you don't want to get stuck. But also, uh, they're going to fly away. So as you're spraying, just be careful with this spray. Just spray where you need it. Don't spray all over the place. Um, it's not a residual, however, so it doesn't matter if it's on there and then they come back later. It's not going to cause a problem. You have to actually get it physically on the bug to create a problem. So don't spray bees. Don't spray ladybugs with that. Um, the other thing I like to always kind of have in my back pocket um, is... Um, the insecticidal soap. Now this has both in it. So that's great. So you have both things. Um, but the insecticidal soap is really important because we do get a lot of the little um, insects that suck the sap off the brand new leaves. And what those tend to do is they secrete a sicky kind of um, what they call um, honeydew which is a fancy word for poop, <laughs> basically. Um, but because they're sucking all the sugars out of the plant, they're excreting a very sticky substance. And you'll see you'll get a lot of black kind of sticky stuff on your leaves and on the tops of your fruit. So you always kind of see it on the shoulders of all the fruit. So if you're spraying with this or spraying with this one, that keeps that population under control. That keeps that uh, sooty mold under control as well. Your hose is also a really, really good thing to use. I tell everybody, every time I fertilize my citrus, I just take my hose and I hit it super, super hard with the hose. We don't get spring showers here like most places do. So washing off our citrus is good. That docks all the little soft bodied insects off. Um, it's not going to spread them. Don't worry about that. It will kill them when you hit them with the hose because they are so soft bodied and it keeps that population under control just naturally. If it gets so bad, then you can go to this. And I always say spray your tree first, let it dry out. The next day, spray it with this. That's always just a good uh, habit to get into to keep our citrus nice and clean. Um, 
other than that, that is it. I know that kind of sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, citrus do incredibly well in containers too, so we're really lucky. So if you think, oh, I don't have room for something like this, as long as you have room for a pot, this size pot that I have right here, uh, I have two stacked on top of each other. It's a great size. Um, when you're potting a citrus, you want to make sure you have really good drainage. So I would use a cactus mix mixed with a regular potting soil. Um, never, ever, ever put gravel on the bottom of your pots. That's something I wish I can get everybody to understand. We do not need to put gravel in the bottom of our pots. Uh, if you do some research, I actually found a really great article that I was sharing with some other people. Um, it really creates more water problems than helping the water problems. So what happens is that gravel saturates and it takes a long time for it to drain out the bottom. If you've ever dumped a pot that had gravel in the bottom, you know what I'm talking about. It smells horrible. So no gravels in the bottoms of your pots. Uh, the only thing you wanna do maybe is put a screen in the bottom to. Uh, help from any kind of soil coming out the bottom of your hole but even then I don't really have that problem I have tons of containers uh, I'm kind of a lazy gardener in general and I don't typically do that and I never really seem to have a problem um, you don't want your citrus sitting in a saucer and sitting in the water that's drained out and then bringing that water back up that's also very important um, people tend to want saucers because they don't want the water to go all over the place and create stains on their concrete but if you've also ever removed a big old planter that has a saucer underneath it you have a big ring underneath that saucer so don't do that always put them on feet so we sell a nice little pot feet you stick three of them underneath it uh, we have decorative ones and we also have invisible ones so you don't have to see it if you can't find something that matches your container that's absolutely fine raising it up will allow the water to drain out easily and not create a ring underneath your container as well um, we are live by the way so if you have any questions i'm here for all of your questions um, also i want to let you know too that you can always check us out on instagram and facebook so if you've missed the live stream you're watching it later uh, you can add your questions down below uh, we will always answer those for you have a really really great um, um, really long history on our YouTube page so you can see all kinds of fantastic videos there as well um, if you subscribe to our um, email list you get notifications when all the new stuff comes in so I really suggest do that because any of the new things that come in typically sell out pretty quickly and this year has been absolutely stuff out the door um, so make sure you do that as well and do we have any questions for me yes we do Sarah okay. so a question here says I have a Meyer lemon tree that I planted two to three years ago mm -hmm. planted in the ground okay and it's barely grown now okay. they fertilized it and they've watered it mm -hmm. might you know why so some of them are dwarfs so we sell dwarfs and we sell standards um, all citrus that you buy is going to be grafted. Um, grafting means they've taken a mature piece off of a tree and they've grafted onto a new root stock. That's important because that means that your citrus is able to produce fruit right away. If you grow something from seed, it takes quite a few years to come into maturity. So you don't have to worry about that. It's going to depend on what kind of root stock they've grafted it onto. So if it says semi dwarf in there, which is just code for dwarf, there is no dwarf. It's all semi dwarfs um, or standards. They grow incredibly incredibly slow that's kind of the nature of them to keep them small um, also if you buy something that looks like this where well this one has a little bit of a trunk on it but some of the other ones it's just a bunch of branches from the bottom so it's basically a multi trunk that's gonna grow incredibly slow as well um, Myers are not particularly fast growers compared to some of the other um, citrus that are out there. Um, the Mexican lime, the guy in front of me, is a great example of ones that grow super, super fast. Um, so that's not super uncommon. As long as the color of your plant is really good, it's really nice and lush and green, um, that's fine. The key for watering too, which I didn't really get into, is you want to water with citrus really, really deeply and really slow. That's kind of the trick for all plants honestly i tell people this all the time you always want your soil to be wet down below but you want your crust to be dry and the way to accomplish that is water very slowly long and deep so the water penetrates really low and then cut it off a couple of days in between so a question on watering how yes. often someone's asked like for the mexican lime tree okay. how often should they water and what compost did you say they should use? Okay, yeah. Um, so it depends on where you live. I live pretty coastal. I'm in Huntington Beach. So I water my citrus right now while it's cool, like once, maybe even 
well, sometimes twice, but mostly once a week, honestly, at this point, um, because we've been pretty cool. Um, however, I water my pots more than my ones in the ground uh, because they do tend to dry out faster. Uh, so you want to really be cautious of that. Um, so if it's really warm or you're in a really hot area, I would say three times a week really deeply and two times a week um, when it's cooler. Um, if you're real coastal and you're getting a lot of... Um, uh, marine layer like we are you can even get away with even once a week in the ground in a pot I would still say twice a week um, as for the compost um, I love 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 the Malibu compost I love the Malibu tea but the Malibu compost is great because it has uh, fertilizers in it has worm castings in it worm castings is another thing that citrus really really like that will help you with all those little um, sap sucking guys because it adds an enzyme into it that they don't like so I'm a big fan of adding worm castings to your soil and the Malibu already has it in there so you don't even have to worry about it the potting soil is really great as well uh, has a lot of great uh, fertilizers and stuff in it just make sure you're mixing that with the cactus mix you can go straight to potting soil but I really have better luck mixing the, the cactus mix with a regular potting mix because it just drains so much better and that's big to citrus they do not want to be they like water but they don't want to be waterlogged at all Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. So another question here. What does it mean when my orange starts to fruit, but when they get to the size of an olive, they drop off? Okay. So that could be a couple of things. That could be um, a, a plant stress thing in general. Um, when plants are stressed uh, to save themselves, they will abandon their fruit. So if they're starting to set fruit, if we have a big heat snap, um, that happened really bad with my kumquats this year. And I'm really actually disappointed. I barely got any kumquats. And normally I get so many, I don't know what to do with them all. Um, and I've learned to make marmalades and candy kumquats and all these things because I just have too many. This year, I don't have enough to do anything with them. Um, we had a really weird, unusual heat snap and it dropped most of its kumquats uh, before I can even do anything about it. Um, so it's, it's a water stress. It's a heat thing. Also, too, sometimes they will set way more. So you have great pollinators in your yard. That's a really good plus. Um, but sometimes they will set more fruit than they can actually support. So they will will uh, kind of abandon some of the fruit that they can't handle. If they actually uh, grew to full size every single fruit that they set, that could sometimes even break the branches. Um, a lot of commercial growers will go in and selectively take off fruit to get bigger sizes. We don't, well, I don't really care necessarily about my fruit all being very uniform, so I just let it do its thing. Um, I don't do anything like that. I don't pick off any fruit. Uh, my citrus does it on its own, um, and I allow it to just get whatever wonky size it wants to get I don't really care because I'm eating it and I'm enjoying it so um, just be careful about stressors make sure um, that you're not over fertilizing with an inorganic fertilizer that can cause problems as well that's why I love the fact that we only sell organic fertilizers so there's no risk of over fertilizing but there is with synthetic fertilizers so be careful with that Awesome. Thank you. So on fertilizing, mm -hmm. how often should one fertilize? So just read whatever it says on the back of the box. But what I will say about this, so this brand, the Down to Earth, it's three times a year. It's a pretty heavy fertilizer. So you are using quite a lot um, with it. Like I said, it's a, a, a cup per inch of trunk. Um, but with all of my ones that I have in containers, I do do a little bit of supplemental feeding in between those three times because they run out of fertilizer that all drains out the bottom of the pot. So I add a little bit more. Also with my ones in containers, I do find that I need a little bit more iron. So I supplement with the iron. And I only do that once I'm really starting to see the need for it uh, with the iron. Um, I don't, I don't do it unless I'm kind of seeing that there's a problem because this has a good amount of iron in it and it should be pretty good. Um, but if you're noticing that you have very green veins, but yellowing in between, that's a lack of iron. And what about curled leaves? Someone says, I struggle mm. with my citrus trees getting the leaves curled. That's the leaf miner. That's the leaf miner that we were talking about. So the leaf miner is that little bug. So um, if you get a trap like this, you'll see there's an actual tiny little tiny picture of the moth on here. So the moth 
flies around. It lands on the nice fresh leaves because they're the thinnest skinned leaves, right? It lays its eggs, the, lay, the um, egg hatches, and the little larva goes inside the, in between the layers of the leaf and it eats. And it eats in like little patterns. So if you really flip over your curled leaf and look at it, you'll see almost like a silvery little trail that zigzags back and forth. And it's just eating in there, eating in there, eating in there. And then what happens is because it does it on the young leaves, as the leaves mature, sure they curl because they're all contorted and they're damaged inside. Um, so I do suggest grabbing a couple of these traps, hanging them up, checking them weekly. Once you see a little evidence of a moth in there, there's a pheromone that that they go into and they're attracted to and then they get stuck because it's sticky inside, then start spraying with your spinosad. This is not enough to stop it completely. This is just to help you know when to spray because by the time you notice the damage, typically that larva is gone and it's too late at that point. Those leaves will never fix themselves. So I really, really had great luck with this last year. Um, I was always just spraying the second I saw the damage and then I kind of realized I'm probably spraying nothing. That, that little guy's already probably gone by the time I notice it. So once I started doing this and this, no problems at all last year. It really, really worked very well. So invest in these traps. Uh, there's two in these. Um, and they, they cover like a couple of acres. So you really only need one um, in your yard and you can save the one for next year. So just make sure that you store it in a place that's cool and dry and not damp and moist. You don't want it to get ruined inside. Uh, so I'm putting my one up from last year this year. Awesome, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. So another question on dysfunctional fruit. Okay. Why does my orange tend to split open while it's still in the tree? Interesting. You're probably watering too much. Mm -hmm. That's that's a common problem with overwatering. Um, I would slow down on the water. You might even have um, poor draining soil. Um, and really, I tell everybody there's no other way to really fully understand your soil more than actually just taking a shovel, taking a trial, digging down feeling what it's like. Um, being in control of your water, I think, is the most important thing a gardener can do. Um, and I know I'm extreme, <laughs> but I hand water everything in my yard. Um, but if you're running your sprinklers, I always tell everybody, and this always seems to go over very well, you know, grab a coffee, grab a cocktail, go outside, watch your sprinklers run the whole way. Just walk around and look around. Make sure your sprays are all going in the right direction. Nothing is clogged. Um, watch how long it runs for. Then wait an hour, come back and check your soil and see if you have dry spots in your garden. Um, that's something that I think everybody should be doing if they are relying on their sprinklers at least every three months um, so you know what's going on. It's good to really know your timer. Don't really rely on your gardeners to know your timer. They're probably not changing it. Most timers are pretty easy to figure out. You can watch a simple YouTube video so you can adjust your timers too. turn them off when it's raining. Uh, most of them have a really easy off button function just for rain that just temporarily turns them off. So I think everybody really understanding their timers uh, really helps. And then you know if you need to supplement water with a hose. Um, if you're like me and you don't have irrigation, you're watering everything by hand. I think that makes me um, incredibly connected to my garden. I really know what's going on with it because I'm out there pretty often. I am the extreme and this is my job. <laughs> so I don't expect everybody to be that way. Um, but really checking your irrigation. Um, and then that way, if there is a problem, you can let your gardener know. Most things are pretty easy to fix. Fixing a clogged head is really, really simple. And there's nothing like feeling proud about fixing something like that. It's the best feeling in the world. So I really suggest getting to know that kind of stuff um, and being connected. But split fruit usually means that there's an overwatering problem. Awesome. Good to know. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. So a couple of people would like to know what kind of lemons can I plant in a pot? Yeah. So any lemon, uh, honestly, you can plant in a pot. Or um, rather, what would be the best Okay, so uh, as long as it's a dwarf size and your container is big enough, that's the big key. So if you have something that has multiple trunks from very down low, so it's very, very bushy looking, not a tall trunk with a big high head, uh, you can get away with a fairly small pot like this. Um, look for the tag and see if it says semi-dwarf on there. That will also let you know if you can do that. Um, Meyer lemons and Eureka lemons are pretty much... Um, mostly what you're going to find around here. Uh, there's a couple of others we occasionally see, but it's getting harder and harder to find citrus. So either one of those will do well, as long as it's a multi-trunk down low or it's labeled as a um, semi-dwarf. Um, personally, 
I love Meyer lemon because you can't really get them in the stores. They're very thin skinned, but they are sweet. So be prepared for that. Not super sweet, but they are sweeter definitely than a Eureka. Eureka is going to be more like what you find in the grocery store. It's much thicker skinned, bigger fruit. Uh, the Meyer lemon also tends to produce a lot, which I really, really like. So, uh, and that thinner skin makes it harder for them to sell it in the grocery store. They just don't transport, uh, transport very well. So, uh, I love me a Meyer lemon. There's nothing like a Meyer lemon just because it feels so homegrown to me because it's very rare that you're going to find it anywhere else. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. We have a couple of comments here saying thank you. Thanks. Uh, Sarah, you're the best. So informative. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I love that you guys tune in. It's so fun. And I love it when you come into the store and you say hi. That makes me feel so happy. It's so funny. I'll talk to somebody and they'll act so familiar with me and then I'm realizing, do I know this person? And then we talk about the fact that they've watched the videos right. and I'm like, oh, you do know me. Okay. Yes. And I feel like I know you guys. It's awesome. So I'm going to take two more questions here. The first of the two, can I use citrus fertilizer on my other fruit trees? You can. It works really well on avocados, um, for sure. Um, however, it's a, it's a little bit acidic, um, so it works really good on your blueberries as well. Um, just make sure that you're being careful about your fertilizing rates on your other trees. Um, your other trees have a little bit of a different need. Um, so I do really suggest buying separate fertilizers for certain things. Um, your trees can use an all purpose, like your, your, um, uh, nectarines, apples, pomegranates, all those kind of things. You can absolutely use an all purpose. The, the three things I will for that I typically have at my house, I always have an all purpose. I always have a rose and flower fertilizer, which I use on all my roses and all my bulbs. I grow a lot of dahlias and a lot of roses. Um, I always have an acidic fertilizer because I have a maple and I have some blueberries and I always have a citrus fertilizer. So those are the four I always have um, in stock. My all purpose can pretty much apply to just about everything. Um, in a pinch, I will use my all purpose on everything. Um, I'm just being really careful about the fact that I know my citrus need a lot of iron and need a lot of um, nitrogen. And I know that my uh, acidic loving plants, my blueberries and my uh, Japanese maple need a lot of acid. Uh, so I will supplement other things if that's all that I have in stock. But I would really suggest uh, an all purpose on anything else uh, that you have instead of relying on a and it's very inexpensive uh, than relying on a citrus fertilizer for everything. Awesome, thank you, Sarah. So last question here, and it, it's a little longer, so okay. <laughs> I'll read it out. It says, does all the soil under the camp canopy need to be wet when watered, or can I place the hose at the base of the trunk to water in the ground? Okay. in ground tree yeah so that makes sense to me um so you're you're kind of talking about your drip line so a tree's drip line when we talk if you hear gardeners talking about the drip line and that's where you should be fertilizing the drip line is anything on the outside perimeter of the longest farthest leaves from the trunk right so the drip line is if you were getting water on the plant naturally like via rain where is most of the water penetrating the ground and that's at the drip line and that's typically where the roots start to grow so when you're fertilizing and this is a really great point and i'm glad you brought this up when you're fertilizing you don't want to fertilize and throw it right at the trunk of the tree it will spread and this is not something you have to mix with water or anything so it works its way in the ground with uh, just natural watering and stuff um, but you really want to fertilize around the edge of the drip line of your tree um, sometimes that's not not always possible. I have a tree planted in between a house and a sidewalk and I know that the drip line is inside my house, <laughs> well under my house, and then it, under the sidewalk. Um, so I have to just spread it out as far as I possibly can and my tree is absolutely fine. But um, when you're watering, um, if it's a really, really large tree, you don't want to go necessarily up to the very trunk of the tree. You want to water in two, maybe three spots out of like near the edges of the drip line. If it's a small tree like this, um, you can put it up at the trunk of the tree. As long as you're watering slow, it's gonna penetrate and really work its way. We have very, very, very clay soil in most places here in Southern California. So that causes the water to spread out far, but not very deep. So that's one of the key reasons I say slowly, because it takes <laughs> a while for it to go down. Um, so on a small tree near the trunk, that's totally okay. On a larger tree, maybe spread it out and water in three separate areas if you can, closer to the drip line of the tree. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for that yeah. wonderful info, Sarah. Yeah. Those are all the questions we have awesome. for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And like I said, if you've uh, missed the live stream portion of this and you still have more questions, just throw them down uh, below in the comments and then we'll uh, get back to you on those. You can, of course, always call us here and talk to any one of the great horticulturists we have here at Rogers Gardens. We can answer all of your questions for you. Um, and then I know we have, this is a live video, I know we have new citrus coming in. So uh, we've been a little sparse in our varieties, but this is a new guy out here on the floor right now. Um, and then the smell, even if you don't have room for citrus, just come <laughs> smell these trees because they smell so good. Just standing right here in between is absolutely fantastic. Um, be sure to, to check out, we have our online boutique. Um, you can always shop our online boutique do curbside pickup as well that is still available here um, and then always subscribe to that email so you know when all the new stuff's coming in so you can be in the new um, and then be well be safe and happy gardening everybody bye thanks <laughs>